Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and today I want to show you two mineral samples I just got in the mail today and they're both uranium beautiful pieces of uranium, really nice pieces I'm going to start off with showing you a couple of these little pieces of uh, uranium I have from before and you can look and see and even see the dial on the uh, Geiger counter or even the exact energy that comes from it so let me show you what I have here and uh, then I'll show you the wonderful minerals and you can be hopefully amazed as I am at them I think they're absolutely beautiful this is a Fiesta Ware plate it's made of uh, uranium oxide to a degree it's actually the glaze on the outside the inside of the plate is just harmless ceramic but the depleted uranium in this plate makes it less than savory for eating off of let's put the polymaster on it and see what the reading goes up to as you can see, the reading is 0.29 microsieverts, 0.33. By the way, just to let you know, this polymaster right here is actually telling me the real amount of dose that you get per the actual energy of the photons hitting it. These Geiger counters here can't do that. They can only reference it and say, well, if I got this many counts from a CZ-137 sample, they would be equal to this many uh, microsieverts per hour. And of course, that's not accurate at all. It's somewhat accurate, but not accurate enough. Alrighty. Well, anyway, that's not too bad. But let's see what we get from some uranium. Well, that is uranium, but little pieces, nice little rock samples of it. And just to let you know, there's a lot of alpha and beta radiation coming out of there that the polymaster is missing. That could account for some of the differences between what the Geiger counter sees and the polymaster. Let's put on a glove. Probably don't need it, but you know safety. Alright, now the first set of samples I have here are um, quite small. These are the small ones. The other ones I'm going to show you are really big, so just don't hit the stop button yet. I have cooler samples coming. These little silly stupid ones. I'll show you these first. The uh, first guy is gummite with pitch blend, and that would be this guy right here. Let me cut my light on. With my light, perhaps you'll be able to see this a little better. Gummite with pitch blend? Probably not. There's a little black piece of pitch blend in the end. And though it may not seem like much, if you look at the um, CDV700 Geiger counter here, it does detect it for sure. If we switch to the times one mode, we can actually see. 100 counts a minute? Yeah, that's not much. It gets about 800 from the um, inspector. This next guy right here has pitch blend and tiaumunite. We certainly get a little bit more. In fact, we go hard over on the Geiger counter for the times one setting. These little samples are neat. I'll show you this one little shiny one, but then I think we need to probably switch off and look at the real samples. Because look at that little guy. I, I, I probably should point this out. This is a uranite sample, two grams, actual shiny uranite. And that will make us go hard over. On the times 10 mode, on the times 10 mode, do we go hard over? No. But just out of curiosity, what does the inspector say about this thing? Oops, I have the sound off, so it doesn't say very much, does it? Let's put it down. The inspector likes it a lot. It will eventually get about 3,800 counts per minute. I've already tested this beforehand. Not bad. Now let's see what the um, Polymaster thinks. You notice Polymaster jumps up. And look at that. Over a microsievert per hour from that little tiny rock. Little tiny specimen over a microsievert per hour. Now, let's put that away and let us switch to some more powerful samples. Alright, the previous samples came from uh, either the Moab mine in Utah or um, possibly Grants, New Mexico. They were from United Nuclear. This next sample that you see right here, this is uh, Carnotite with Tiaumunite again. Although I'm not sure actually if this is Tiaumunite, it's what it's uh, described as. The little bits of yellow, you might not be able to see them very well, but there's little bits of yellow that are in here. 
and that's the uh, carnotite, and there's little tiny inclusions of like a crystalline structure, which probably is the tiaunite, but I'm not 100% sure. This guy packs a wallop. Let's see. On the inspector. Measuring alpha, beta, and gamma, we get a tremendous dose. I wouldn't call it a tremendous dose, but a lot. That's an interesting error. Did you see the inspector shows 60 counts per, per minute there for a random second? It's pretty funny. Let's we'll see if the other side gets it worse. I think this side will get the worst. I think there's more carnitite in this side. There we go. Fourteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. If you get the right spot, you can get up to twenty-three thousand. Let's see what the um, CDB seven hundred does. Same, same piece, same mineral. On the times ten scale. The times ten scale, we get up over a thousand counts a minute almost immediately. If we get the right side, we can hit 2,000. It's a hot little rock. Again, that's from United Nuclear, and this one's from the Mo oops, this one's from the Moab mine for sure. Let me point my light at it. Maybe that will brighten it up just ever so slightly. Now let's add the, the Polymaster. And by the way, just to let you know, Polymaster showing about 10, 14, 14 uh, sorry, 1.1. 1.1, 1.3 microsieverts per hour. Now we take the uranium sample and we put it on top of the inspect or the um, polymaster, and we jump up to four microsieverts per hour, five microsieverts per hour, nearly six, nearly six. Now we'll give it a minute for the statistic here, as they call it, the statistic, st statistical accuracy to come up right. And this is nearly my hottest specimen. Nearly, but not quite, because I have something better to show you in just a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to breeze over this gummite sample right here, because it's not terribly important, but I want to just kind of quickly show it to you, because I'm almost to the good stuff, and you're saying, Tom, why don't you just get to the good stuff? Well, if I went right to the good stuff, then you wouldn't watch the less good stuff. Yeah, 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 fast forward to the end if you don't like it. That's the gummite, it's the red stuff. See the little reddish color, maybe you can see it better under the... I'm not sure that the light really helps. You can tell me later if you all think the light helps or not. Okay, but anyhow, that reddish stuff is gummite. Now let's test it. As you can see right here, the inspector, uh, sorry, I keep calling the inspector, the polymaster is at 0 0.9 microsieverts per hour. This polymaster down here, let's see what happens if we put the gummite near it, but we're not going to touch it with the gummite because we don't want to contaminate it. But as you can see, we're not getting that high. One microsievert, yeah, about a microsievert. That's not much. We didn't give it time to be perfectly accurate, but it wouldn't really go up too much higher if we did. And when we use the inspector, we'll get about 8,000 counts a minute. 1,000. Two. Three. Four, five. Let's see if we get any higher. Six. Look at that. Looks like we're getting a little higher. Seven. Oh, that's right. I had the alpha shield on when I took that original me uh, measurement. That increases it a little bit. And certainly, the CR100 picks it up too almost 500 counts per minute in the CRM. Let's get into something a little better. Now, as promised, here are the two new specimens I bought. I know you're just waiting to see the two new ones. I'll start with the best one first. How's that? This is my new pride and joy. Nicely uh, labeled. This piece of torbanite. Meta Torbonite. 
Anyway, this comes from an. I just got this one, so I have. I don't have all the details memorized, but it comes from the uh, Musoni Mine in Kolwezi, Katanga, which is apparently Shaba, which is a province in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is a truly beautiful sample. Metatorbonite is one of the most beautiful types of uranium, besides perhaps autonite, which I also have a sample of. Look at that. Probably should just use the zoom function, but regardless. I'll... let me superimpose a close-up of it. Here you go. Alright, now... Let's take this little guy, and I have it sealed in the bottom here, as you can see, so it won't come out. But um, let's see if we can kind of test it while it's in its container. What does the inspector think? Whoa, I'm just getting near it. Sixty-four thousand. Hundred and ten. Yeah. Hot. Well, what's the CRM 100 thing? Hard over. Let's go to times 100. Now we have a 0 to 30,000 count range. And at near contact, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to hurt it. You're looking at 10,000 counts according to that. Now, Let's see what kind of dose it puts off. Put that on top of that. The gammas go right through the plastic. They make almost no difference. Let's build up here. 0.8. See that very well, can you? Kind of hard to see it. Anyway, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 microsieverts. Hmm. Perhaps the plastic, no, I'm sorry, the plastic doesn't do much for the gammas, but the uranium's on the top, so I'll have to put this over top of it, gently. Very, very gently. I don't want it to drop in there. I guess I'm just going to have to hold it. Let's see what I get. So I tested this a day or two ago, and we got two micro sieverts from it. There we go. There becomes our two microsieverts. You have to be very close to it for that, by the way. So about two microsieverts per hour is what you get off of this guy at contact. Very, very, just deliciously beautiful. Can you see the coloring? God, that's a nice specimen. And I got that from Mineralogical Research Company, by the way. If you would like a, a kind of an inexpensive piece of uranium for your for your collection, like um, the little guy over here, which I probably should use my gloves, but you know whatever. There's nothing wrong with those. You can get them from United Nuclear. These guys cost a little bit more, and they're a little hotter. They're for the more serious collector, like me. Okay. Now, last but not least, this is the last sample. This one looks ugly, but don't judge a uranium sample by what it looks like. Ugly, you say? Okay, yeah. It seems sort of ugly. It doesn't have any bright colors, no beautiful, sudden little crystals. And not only that, and much, what's much worse, is it's very, very hot. At 5 microsieverts per hour, 6.52, 7. That's no good. That's almost a millirem per hour. Not good at all. So, what makes this one so good? Obviously, this will go insane. It's hard to hold this without touching it. Oops. So I don't touch the probe, but I smash my stand. Let's get that really close and see what we get. as much as the other one. 
but a higher reading of exposure. Again, not as much on the uh, CRM100. Let me show you why this one's beautiful, because you're probably saying, okay, why is it beautiful? Now, let me cut the lights off first, then you'll see. Okay, so, now here we are, I'm back again. Why is this one such a beautiful one? Now let me pick it up. That's why. Do you see what the black light does to it? Black light makes it glow, and by God does it glow. It glows most brightly. Now it's hard to see with this camera. This camera doesn't do a very good job of it, but it speckles like the starry night. My God, it's beautiful. Deadly, but beautiful. Although regrettably, my beautiful Torbonite does not glow at all, even though it has phosphorus in it. But, I guess that's what one expects. Anyhow. At least the Polymaster likes them. Here we go. As you can see, it came up with americium 241 and Radium-226. Well, the Radium-226 part's right. I'm not sure how it got the americium 241 but I think that was a result of, um, it was a result of, I think I know the peak that's causing the error on that, so I'll have to do something about it, but crazy. Now let's see a Spectrum. Alrighty, and as you can see, a beautiful uranium spectrum is forming with bismuth 214, lead 214, uranium 235, and so on. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and 